Okay, everyone, it is uh, high noon on the East Coast. We'll go ahead and get started. Welcome to Meadows 2010. My name is Jody Underwood, and I am the Foundry Senior Account Manager. The title of this session is Recreating the Secondary General Music Classroom, and we are very lucky to have Barbara Friedman presenting for us today. Barbara Friedman has been teaching music since 1997 and teaching electronic music and audio engineering at Greenwich High School in Connecticut since 2001. She is the co-president of the Music Educator Technologist Association, the Technology Institute for Music Educators, Connecticut chapter, and an association of music educa educators founded in 1989. She is an author, consultant, trainer, and frequent presenter clinician at local, state, and national in-service conferences and events. Barbara is also a survivor of the New York City Public Schools, both as a teacher and a student. She holds a Bachelor of Science and Master of Music Performance from Brooklyn College Conservatory of Music City, University of New York, and a Professional Studies Diploma from the Mann's College of Music. She studied conducting at the Hart School of Music, Westminster Choir College, and the Juilliard School. She is a Time Level 1 Certified Instructor. Before we get started, I'd like to tell you just a little bit about Soundtree. For those of you who are not familiar with Soundtree, we specialize in turnkey learning systems for music educators. We are your one-stop resource for purchasing technology for your music classroom, whether it is one piece of software, a microphone, or a state-of-the-art music technology lab or digital recording studio. Along those lines, we also provide the installation services and professional development, be it on-site or via webinar like we are doing today. In addition to events like today, we provide free webinars, monthly email newsletters, lesson plans, articles, and more. I'd urge you to check out our website at soundtree.com, become a friend on Facebook, and sign up for our email newsletter. We are teacher-focused, and one of our core missions is to help music educators integrate technology into their curricula with lifetime free technical support and free online professional development opportunities like today. Three things to remember before we get started. All of your phone lines are currently muted. If you have a question, please save it until the end of the presentation and click on the raise your hand at the bottom of the participant window. You are registered for this session only during this hour. Unfortunately, we cannot permit you to join another session during this time period. At the conclusion of the session, you will need to quit the meeting center tool and click on the appropriate link for the next session in the email you receive. Lastly, all sessions are being recorded today, and an archive recording will be available at www.meadowsonline.com on October 25th. Another exciting thing that is happening throughout the day is the live blog coverage of the event and our Twitter integration. The link displayed here will feature live commentary from a team of bloggers. If you would like to join the conversation, please make a note of the link. The conversation will be made available on the Meadows homepage after the event. For those of you who are on Twitter, here are the hashtags for the event today. And finally, before we get started, we'd like to thank all of our corporate sponsors, professional affiliates, and presenters who have made today's event possible. We hope you take the time today to visit their respective websites. We could, have not, could not have done this without their support. And finally, without further ado, I would like you to please welcome Barbara Friedman. The roar from the crowd, I hear you all now. Hey, how you doing? Okay, so apparently I am now the presenter. Hello, hello, I see a list of people that I know. Okay, that's uh, loud. So welcome to uh, the session. Thank you very much for being here. This is my first time um, doing a a webinar, and I see and hear no one, and it's actually really weird, but um, Let's have a go at it. So uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, recreating the secondary general music classroom, as it says. Uh, the idea uh, basically is um, that uh, we come to teaching uh, secondary education with a tradition of uh, mostly lecture-based learning. And uh, I know that people have developed lots of skills and lots of tools that they can enhance their uh, their teaching in their classroom and make it a little bit more interesting other than just the old-fashioned uh, textbook 
and uh, music history learning that uh, a lot of us were used to doing. When I first started teaching uh, back in, um, it was 14 years ago, I taught in Forest Hills High School in Queens, and we had uh, 50 students in a secondary uh, classroom. We had 50 students in the general music classroom. That was the legal limit in music. They put as many kids as they could, and it was also the legal limit in gym. So my first year teaching, someone had the great idea of, uh, before I got there, they decided, oh, let's put music and gym opposite one another every other day for a year and give it to every freshman we could. So um, that was 200 freshmen for a year, 50 in a class. And um, for those of you who know me, will see the gray. That's where I get my gray hair. So let's get going. Um, why? Uh, why change what we've been doing? Well, there's a lot of re reasons, but um, do you remember The Music Man? I bet you do remember The Music Man. Uh, based on uh, the the story is based on Franklin Lacey's story uh, and uh, taken up by Meredith Wilson, uh, adapted for a musical. Uh, Franklin Lacey grew up in Mason City, Iowa, and he based this story on his hometown of Mason City, which they renamed to River City. And basically the idea of the music man is that you have this traveling salesman comes to town, and what he wants to do is convince people that this weird new thing called band is actually important to keep kids and uh, off the street. So he's going to uh, sell them all these instruments. And he's a con man. He's going to sell them these instruments. Now, this took place, the story takes place in 1912. A hundred years ago, in the Midwest, no one knew about bands. I find that remarkable, considering that today in the Midwest, everyone plays in a band or on the football team. And for most of the country, I think that that's true. So that was 100 years ago. And 100 years later, bands rule the roost in most of this country. And what started out as the, the first kinds of education that kids got was the so-called general music education. Now bands rule the roost. So um, my slant on this is to try to change that. Why change that? Well, here's some data compiled by um, a student uh, at Illinois State, Nathan Edwards, and put together uh, on the website by Dave Williams and Rick Dammers, who, by the way, have a session later today at 2 p.m. And uh, this gives you some idea of uh, some of the performance programs that are available in this country today and how many students are not participating in bands, orchestras, and choirs that on average about 80% of the population does not participate in bands, orchestras, and choirs. But this is where most of education puts uh, their, their efforts. Most of, of schools put their efforts into performance programs. But what are we doing to take care of the other 80% of the population? How do we reach and how do we teach this other 80%? Well, there's lots of different things that we can do, and as I said, there were uh, lots of alternatives that people do in a classroom setting. We know that you can do um, ethnic training. You can do lots of different units uh, in the in the actual classroom. But uh, my, I think the, the the slant for the 21st century is to get us to the 21st century learner and have uh, different kinds of uh, opportunities that kids are using today. They have these materials in their homes. They have computers in their back pockets. We have kids who know all about how to use technology. The question for us is if we choose to go the route of changing uh, our focus or at least incorporating technology into the general music classroom, what do we choose? What can you possibly choose? There's so many different things to choose from. How do you decide? How does one decide what to do? Well, I use a variety of things. I use a, a few different focuses that you see here on the page. Um, and But mostly what I do is I teach um, at a computer and composition. But whatever it is that you decide to do, I encourage you to follow my motto. So those of you who know me know that this is really what uh, I focus on for anybody. You don't have to know a lot about technology. You do not have to know how to work sophisticated software or programs or devices. You can do this with very little or no knowledge 
as long as you keep your focus on what it is that you want to teach, and that is teaching music. And how do we know that teaching technology is actually beneficial to students? This has been going on for a long time. My school has been teaching the course that I teach is called Electronic Music. And this course has been around since 1969. It is the general music class at Greenwich High School in Connecticut and has been since 1969. So here's some numbers from the last uh, five years. Which are, these are the requests, uh, student requests, these elective courses. Um, and I think it's pretty striking to see uh, the, the selections that we have here. I think you can see my mouse. Um, Band, orchestra, chorus, and electronic music, uh, interestingly enough. Um, we, electronic music has, is the single most requested class, the introductory course is the single most requested class in the building uh, out of 50 electives that you could take and uh, has been for the last three years. I teach four different levels of electronic music, intro, e-music one, e-music two, three, and an honors segment. And not only are these numbers interesting, I don't have them of the, uh, completely compiled, but the research and the, the numbers that I've been crunching lately have shown that uh, on average, somewhere between 14 and 15 percent of the students that take electronic music are of the lower demographic, uh, it, lower income demographic in Greenwich. So we have a lower income demographic, and that is made up, it happens to be in Greenwich, made up of African American and Latino students. And 14 to 15 percent of all of the students enrolled in electronic music are of the lower income demographic. For band, orchestra, and chorus, the average is between 4 and 5 percent, sometimes as low as 2 percent, depending upon the class. Uh, interesting and ironically enough, guitar, that number is around 10 to 12 percent. So this has to do with some uh, initiatives like bridging the achievement gap, how do you do that? How do you keep and get kids in school and keep them interested? Um, I say go with technology. So as I said before, there's lots of different things that one can do. I'm going to uh, play a little video here of uh, one alternative. If you were at uh, MENC last year, um, I'm sorry, it was a time conference in February. We had, this is the band Total Chaos. Um, some kids are playing. Music, this is their own creation on handheld electronic device. So I just want to play a little excerpt of uh, some of the things that you can do. Uh, this is going to be over the phone. It's a little weird. I'm going to put the volume up. I think it's going to be okay. And uh, here we go. on. Love that. So uh, the, I put together this little ensemble, or the kids put it together themselves, and the idea was that I think that playing a live ensemble is really beneficial, and uh, they get an idea of what it's like to create music as an ensemble as opposed to uh, making music on the computer, uh, which is really what most of what I do in my classroom. I teach applied learning um, through music composition, and that's really what most of this, uh, this session is about. How do I go about doing that? I think that students um, will learn the basics of music and get some understanding about uh, the basic elements of music and how music is created with applied learning. Most of my students don't play an instrument or sing in choir. They are of that 80% that do not participate and never have. But they want to make music. They want to create music. They want to know about uh, music. So um, there's a handout that's available to you. Um, it's in... Um, it's actually, I think it's in the um, the, set, the webinar. There's a, there's a handout page up there. Um, and uh, it's also on my website, musicedtech.com. Uh, 